eye for an eye. Uh -huh. He brought to us a new law. Come on. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Amen. That's true. And if he smites you on one cheek, turn, turn the other cheek. Yes, Amen. Sir. Hallelujah. Right. The best thing is prayer. Amen. Many times we say, well, all I can do, as if it's not very much, yeah. all I can do is pray. Yeah. Pray is, prayer is very, very important. Amen. Amen. That's true. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus put a very high premium on prayer as we should Amen. today as well. Yes. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about the victory of the cross. And of course last week was Resurrection Sunday. Yes. And we've been talking some about the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem mm -hmm. and how that it is recorded in all four Gospels mm -hmm. and how that even though they praised and they worshipped and they was lifting Him up, mm -hmm. the sad thing is most of them, if not all of them, didn't have any idea what He came to do. All right. Many of them thought He was a prophet and He was. Yeah. Many of them thought He was a miracle worker and He was. Come on. Many of them thought he was a king to, and was coming to usher in a kingdom. He was, but not the kingdom that they thought right. that he had came to set up. Amen. And we talked about how that he made it clear to his disciples yeah. why he came. Come on. He told them that he was going to be set before the scribes and the religious people of that day and how that he was going to be delivered up to be crucified. Come on. Even told them how many days and nights he was going to be in the heart of the earth. Yeah. Told him that this was the reason that he came. This was the hour. This was the purpose. Amen. He would stand before Pilate and he would tell Pilate, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Right. Amen. True. He said, for this hour, to this end was I born. That's what he told Pilate. Come on. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. Yeah. What cause? To die on the old rugged cross so that man would once again be able to have a way to God, so that man could have salvation, so that man could be saved. He said he came to seek and to save yeah. that which was lost. So we know why he came. He didn't come to set up an earthly kingdom. Right. He made it very plain why he came. Come on. The work that he came to accomplish, he accomplished that by giving his life. Mm -hmm. Peter said to him once, as a matter of fact, when he told them that he was going to be delivered up and, and be killed, and yeah. Peter said, Lord, no, be it far from you. This can't happen. You've got to understand, Peter loved yeah. Jesus. He walked with him. He talked with him. Come on. He had changed Peter's entire life. When he met Peter, Peter was a fisherman. Yeah. And he told Peter, he said, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers Amen. of men. Amen? I'll give you a new kind of right. occupation. So Peter had had given up everything to follow this man, and now this man says they're fixing to kill me. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, Peter in his flesh didn't want this to happen. Come on. So he takes hold of Jesus, I believe the Bible says, says, Lord, be it far from you. This is not going to happen. And Jesus rebukes him, rebukes the spirit that's coming against him. He says, oh, this must happen. For this reason, I came into the world. This is why I came. And Pilate would say, are you a king? He said, well, you say that I am. Mm -hmm. He said that if my kingdom was of this world, my servants would rise up and fight to save me. Yeah. But my kingdom is not of this world. Amen. He came to make a way. He would tell the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He would say, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. He came to make a way for mankind. Yes, sir. That was his reason, his purpose, his goal. Come on. Not to set up an earthly kingdom. Earthly kingdoms can do you no good. Right. Amen. Go back into the annals of history and, and read up on some of the more famous, more prominent kings and the ones that are that, that had power and see what their end was. Come on. Earthly kingdoms cannot help you. The Roman Empire was an earthly kingdom come that on. came crashing down. Right. Amen? Come kingdoms come and go in this world. Yes. But Jesus came to set up an eternal kingdom. On. One that you can be a part of come today on. when you put your faith in His finished work. Come on, the Bible says then we become what 
what does it say? A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Amen? A royal priesthood. A holy nation. You've been grafted into the vine today if you put your faith in Jesus. So he would make it clear to his disciples what his mission was. He would make it clear to Pilate what his mission was. Whenever he would say, this is the reason that I came to bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate would say, what is truth? Yeah. When he said this, he went out again unto the Jews in front of the crowd. And he said, I find no fault at all in this man. I find in him no fault at all. So he would, be de he would be delivered to the persecutors, to be persecuted at the whipping post, yeah. to be beaten with a cat of nine tails, till his flesh was ripped to shreds. One of the prophets, it might have been, been Isaiah, that said he was beyond recognition. You say, well, I went and seen the passion of the Christ, and it was terrible, it was awful, you should have seen him. Yeah, but that doesn't even, that doesn't even do justice to what right. they did to Jesus. Amen. The most horrific picture that we can imagine today probably won't do justice to what they did to him for you. They ripped him. They beat him. They spit on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And this is the reason that he came. Amen. This is the reason that he came. This was the cup that he was sent to drink. After they beat him, after they spit on him, after they ripped his flesh to shreds, after they crowned him with a crown of thorns, they would then put the cross on his back for him to pack it up Golgotha's hill. Amen. He would make it to the top of the hill and they would lay him down on those old wooden beams and they would drive spike nails through his hands and through his feet. <clears throat> Many still confused, not, not, not understanding what happened. I thought he was going to be the king that led us against the Roman Empire. I thought he was going to set up his own kingdom. I thought he was going to be the one that got us out from under the thumb of the Romans' abuse and taxes and law system and everything that they did, the bondage that they had put on the Jewish people. Come on. They nailed him to the cross and they suspend him there between heaven and earth. And listen to what the Bible says. We read this last week. John 18. I'm sorry, John 19 and 28 says, After this, now this is Jesus hanging on the cross. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Yeah. That the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Whoa. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and they put it upon hyssop, and they put it to his mouth. Yeah. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, yeah. and he gave up the ghost. Man. It is finished, yeah. the work that I came to do, well, the reason that I came, yeah. the purpose, the goal, the cause. I have now finished what my Father has sent me to do. Right. And when He would whisper or scream those words, when He would say those words from the top of the cross, it is finished. The Bible says the temple veil would be written in twain right. from top to bottom. Amen. That's why He came. Right. To remove the barrier between man and God. On, so that man could walk boldly into the throne room of grace and ask for mercy and get it through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. why He came. Right. Not an earthly kingdom, but a heavenly one. Right. Not an earthly way, but a heavenly way. To make a way so that you wouldn't have to go to hell. See, you don't have to go to hell today because of His finished work. On, if you'll put your faith in Jesus, say, oh, but I'm trusted in my religion. Well, you're going to go to hell. I'm trusting in my leader. I'm going to, then you're going to go to hell. Oh. I'm trusting in the way that I live and how good I am. Then you're going to go to hell. Oh. The only way to get to heaven is through this door that Jesus made. Through this door that Jesus is. Yeah. He said, I am the door. Amen. If you get in, you must come through the door. Amen. It is finished. Yeah. And I talked to you last week for a few minutes about how that if you believe that the battle was won in the tomb or if you believe that the battle was won somewhere in the corridors of hell during the three days yeah. that Jesus was in the tomb, Paul makes it very clear where the battle was won. Yeah. 
Yeah. If there's any doubt in your mind whatsoever, because see, there's a lot of people that teach that after Jesus died on the cross, he had to go to hell and wrestle the devil for three days and three nights. Yeah. Amen? I heard that from the time I was knee high to a grasshopper until the time I knew better. Yeah. Amen? And you still hear that from, from some people today. Right. That's not Bible. Amen? Some of the biggest word of faith preachers, I could tell you their names today, mm -hmm. and you would know their names right away. Yeah. Maybe I'll tell you their names and then we can cut that out later for those that are on the radio. But Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers, they teach that. They teach that Jesus went to hell, suffered as a sinner, and was born again in hell. Mm. None of which is biblical. There is nowhere to be found where Jesus ever had to wrestle the devil for keys. As a matter of fact, you can't find the devil even had the keys. Right. And another thing, the, devil, the devil's not in hell. <laughs> Amen? Right. So for him to go to hell to wrestle the devil is a pretty impossible feat compared I and mean, considering the fact that the devil's not in hell yet. Right. Amen? The Bible says he's roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Right. He was cast down to the earth. He hadn't been cast into hell yet. He is not, regardless of what you see in movies, regardless of what you hear, or you read in comic books, or people tell you, the devil is not the chief tormentor in hell. When he goes to hell, he'll be tormented just like those that rejected Christ will be tormented. He will not go there to be the gatekeeper. He will not go there to be the taskmaster, Brother Sleeves. He will go there to suffer because of the fact he rejected Jesus just like everyone else that ever goes to hell. That's why they go, because they rejected Jesus. Well, they went because they were drunk. No, not really. They went because they were they were uh, strung out on drugs. No, they went because they were a whoremonger. They went because they were whatever the, the terrible thing that we think they might have done. No, they went because they rejected Jesus. You cannot go to heaven unless you accept Jesus. Amen. That's the truth. You go to hell because you reject right. Jesus. True. So there was no fight going on in hell. Exactly. He would speak to the malefactor and say, Today I will be with you in paradise. So the battle was won on the cross, and if you had any doubts about that, and if you don't believe me that Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Meyer teach these things, go on the internet and see what they teach. There used to be an audio, I think they may have pulled it now, of Joyce Meyer going on and on and on about how that Jesus was in hell and that all the demons were on top of him and the devil was on top of him and that he was about to go down for the last count and how that it was almost over for him. Somebody please bring me some Bible for that. Maybe we won't cut it out. And if you're out there listening, you can bring me some Bible for that. Amen? Yeah. Down for the last count. Right. Almost out. It almost didn't make it. Amen? No. The Apostle Paul put it better than this old country preacher could in Colossians 2 and 14 when Paul said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In his cross he triumphed over them. In his cross, he was pronounced victor over sin, victor over death, right. victor over the grave, Great. victor over hell. Oh. In that, if you ever seen a boxing match or, or one of those fake wrestling matches, when the other guys meet, they go over and lift the hand up of the winner and announce him as being the champion. Listen, the cross might look like a place of defeat to you today. And that's why it seems foolishness to the lost. But to those of us which are saved, it is the power of God. Why? Because we don't look at that as a place of defeat, but a place of the greatest victory that was ever known to mankind took place on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Victory was won when he said it is finished. I have accomplished that which the Father has sent me to do. Yeah. My blood can now be applied to the mercy seat and can save mankind if they'll put their faith in me. Amen. It is finished. Yeah. I have accomplished what I was sent to accomplish. Hallelujah. Victory. Come on. Victory. Come on, tell it. Victory. That's why I like that song. So much that Brother Tyler sung this morning when they drove the nails. The gates of hell cried, It's Him! It's Him! When the blood began to flow out of the veins of Emmanuel, the enemy knew it was Him! Hallelujah! There was not, a, there was not defeat at the cross. There was victory. Come on. 
There was defeat, but it was for the devil. Right. <laughs> Amen. True. For the devil. Exactly. For the devil. For the devil. Because we know, yeah. not taking anything away from the power of the resurrection, because can you imagine? Oh, what a powerful thing that was. After they took his body down from that old cross and they placed it in a borrowed tomb. And on that third day, on that morning, whenever the rock began to roll away and Jesus walked out, he could have walked right through the rock. He walked through walls after that, amen? That's right, but the stone had to be moved so the disciples could look in and see that's where he was, but he ain't there no more. Amen. The stone had to be moved for our benefit today. Right. He's arisen. He has arisen. He's alive. Alive forevermore. Amen. <clears throat> my, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul Amen. said, he made a show of them openly that he spoiled principalities. Mm -hmm. He stripped the enemy of his armor. Come on. Amen. Amen. You can talk today about the devil having power, and I'm not saying that he has no power. But I can tell you today that greater is he that is in you if you have Jesus than he that is in the world. Amen. I can tell you today that there is not a demon, there is not a devil, there is not a principality that can withstand the power that is in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. There is no power greater than the power that you receive when you put your faith in His finished work on the cross. Amen. I've had devil worshippers pray against me. I've had witches pray against me. I've had other people that would sin and say, well, we're praying against you to whatever. Especially when we take a stand on Halloween, we face a lot of... of, of of uh, principalities and powers and fighting on that level. Yeah. But what's the kid say if you if it don't, it don't stick to me and you know it bounces off me and sticks to you so whatever. Mm -hmm. The Lord said He'd return it on the forehead of the enemy when they pray against you. Oh, Amen. Right. Hallelujah. They'd be better off not to pray against us. Amen. Amen. True. They'd be better off to mind their business. Amen. Because when you begin to touch God's anointing, when you begin to throw the powers of darkness at someone that is clothed in the blood of Jesus, it bounces off and comes back on you. You try all the... I'm not scared of voodoo, amen? You try all the voodoo you want to try. It ain't going to work. Amen? Brother Hinton used to go over there to Haiti and they would hold those church services. And he said that those witch doctors and things would gather around outside and they would start doing their voodoo. Come on. And he couldn't understand why their voodoo didn't work against them. I can tell you why it don't work. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, come on. You have the power and the authority on, today through the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Because the, de the devil was stripped. The only way the devil can mess you up is if you let him. Right. He can take control of your life if you let him. Right. He can have power over you if you let him. Come on. But if you'll put your faith in Jesus today, Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So you can puff all the smoke you want to. Stick all the little dolls with pins you want to. But no weapon that is formed against God's people will prosper. Amen. Never has, never will. You do not have the power to bring down God. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon what rock? His finished work, Christ. Amen. Not Peter. Peter wasn't perfect. He wasn't strong enough to be the rock. Amen. But upon this rock, upon Jesus, what, what did he just ask Peter? Who, does me, who, do, who do you say that I am? He said, You're Christ. You're the Son of the living God. He said, Upon this rock. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There is no power of darkness today that can overcome the power of the cross and the finished work that Jesus did there. Amen. There is no power True. strong enough. Listen what else he did. And this is what I didn't get to last Sunday but I wanted to throw in and I ran out of time. Go with me to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. In the eighth verse, if you're going, if you got to have your Bible with you today and you're turning to the scripture, Ephesians 4 and 8. Oh. Ephesians 4 and 8. Now we've already talked about how that when he spoiled principalities, that he stripped them of their armor, right. that he took away their weapons, right. that he gave you, and, I, and like I said, it wasn't, it's not so much, it is in one sense, but it's not so much that. 
everything was taken away as it was that something greater was given to you. Right. Amen? True. You know, some of these countries that we face, they still have some weapons, but those weapons do not compare to the weapons that we have. Amen? Amen? True. If it wasn't for the fact that America was so backslid and on her way to hell in a handbasket, and I'm not sure what kind of ground she stands on with God, I wouldn't be scared of North Korea at all. Amen. Because I'm pretty sure we can handle North Korea. Right. But the way that America has turned her back on God, True. it may be something smaller than North Korea that takes her down. Yes, sir. Amen. You got it. God might cause our own weapon to blow up in our face. That's right, brother. Amen. Come on. You can't continue to kill babies by the millions through abortion and say that it's a law and say that it's just a woman's right to choose. You can't continue to do that and everything be okay with you and God. Amen? Abortion still upsets God. Yes, sir. Amen? True. Ephesians 4 and 8. Looking at what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Mm -hmm. Now this is talking about when Jesus ascended. He led captivity captive. Mm -hmm. Now there are a lot of scholars that, will, that believe that this is talking about the souls that were in paradise. Many scholars say that before the cross, the saints of old that died went to a place called paradise that was next door to hell. It wasn't hell, but it was next to hell. And they used the scriptures talking about Abraham's bosom, how that Lazarus the beggar was carried there. And the rich man, when he died and went to hell, he looked over and he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Yeah. And they talk about how that, that's the captive that he led captive. And that very well may be, and I'm not going to get into no theological discussion on that. But without a doubt, this point that the scholars make drives home what we're talking about last week and this week. He led captivity captive. The things that used to have the power to captive you, to capture you, Jesus captured them with his finished work of the cross. He led captivity captive. He arrested sin. He arrested death. He arrested the grave. He arrested the spiritual enemies that come against you. And He took captivity. Those things that used to be able to hold me in bondage. He took those things and, and took them captive Himself. He arrested those things. Yeah. He defeated those things. He took their power away. He led captivity captive. He, he marched into glory victorious and applied His blood to the mercy seat so that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. Thank God. His cross and His finished work there. He led captivity captive. Yeah. You remember the words that God spoke to Eve in the garden, don't you? That this, thy seed will bruise his head and he will bruise his heel. Amen. Jesus planted his foot smack down on the head of the enemy when he said it is finished. Right. That's where your foot ought to be today. Come on. on top of the enemy. Not because of anything that you've done but because of His finished work on the cross, if you'll put your faith in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, yeah. the Bible says that by one man's disobedience, mm -hmm. many were made sinners. Yeah. It goes on to say, by the obedience of one shall many mm -hmm. be made righteous. Yeah. Whose obedience? Jesus his obedience to go to the cross. Come on. To lay down His life for fallen man. To make a way where there seemed mm. to be no way. Right. That's why today the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. Why? Because at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my soul were rolled away. It was there by grace I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. When the world looks at the cross, they may see defeat. But Brother David, when I look at the cross, 
I see victory. When I look at the cross, I see freedom from sin and death. When I look at the cross, I see the greatest victory ever wrought in the in human in, 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 in the history of humankind today. The greatest history ever won. Amen. Two pieces of wood and three old rusty nails. Amen. And the Son of God, obedient unto death. And Jesus said, If I be lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. His finished work. Yes. That's where we must look today for Amen. victory. You're not going to find it in your ability to keep right. the law. You're not going to find victory today. As a matter of fact, all you're going to find is defeat and disappointment. Amen. Because you're going to mess up. That's right. I know none of us want to mess up. None of us, most of the time anyway. Right. I would say none of us plan to mess up. Right. But sooner or later, we're going to mess up. That's right. But that's what His grace and His finished work is all about. Making a way where you couldn't make a way. Through His obedience, we can be made righteous today when we put our faith in Him. Amen. There was a time in the Old Testament. The scripture that I tried to quote to you a while ago about Jesus saying, when I, if I be lifted up, he talks about a situation that took place in the Old Testament when he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Then he goes on, of course, to, to give the famous scripture, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus tell the, tells them, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he's talking about his crucifixion. We find what Jesus is talking about in Numbers, the 21st chapter. The children of Israel had sinned, and they had spake against God and against Moses. And the Bible says that because of this, there were fiery serpents that were sent among them. You see, sin brings judgment. Oh. Always has, always will. Yeah. If you stand before the judgment seat of God with, without being covered in the blood of Jesus, you will suffer the judgment hand of God. Amen. Amen. That's true. Fiery serpents were sent to the people, and the Lord gives Moses a strange command. Mm -hmm. He says, I want you to take, and I want you to make a brass serpent. The Bible calls it a fiery serpent. It was made out of brass. It was a brazen serpent. He said, I want you to put a serpent on a pole. And it shall come to pass that every man that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, looketh upon what? The serpent that he had told Moses to put at the top of the pole. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man. So Jesus is comparing what he's going to do at the cross to what happened out there in the wilderness when man was bitten by serpents and the only hope for them was this. The Bible says, that Moses, I want you to take the serpent and put it on the pole. And when a man is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and he put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now stay with me for just a minute. Mankind had been bitten by a serpent in the Garden of Eden. When mankind disobeyed God, and the Bible says through one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world. Many were made sinners. So through one man, this serpent bit mankind. So whether you know it or not, before you met Jesus, you were bitten by a snake. You were a sinner. Right. He said, everyone that is bitten by the snake, uh -huh. if they'll look to the top of that pole, mm -hmm. if they'll behold that which I have commanded Moses to lift up in the wilderness. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, like Moses lifted up the serpent that was in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Moses lifts up this serpent on a pole in the wilderness. Yeah. And then people bitten by a snake, bitten by a fiery serpent, they're going to die unless they do what? 
unless they look to that which God has lifted up in the wilderness. You will die today unless you behold, unless you look, unless you put your faith to He that to in Him that was lifted up on the cross of Calvary on Golgotha's hill and said it is finished. My work is accomplished now. Those that have been bitten by the snake of sin, now you can live if you look to the cross. Amen. What if there had been people there in the wilderness and there may have been? The Bible doesn't give it doesn't tell, but what if some of some of them said, Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. That's silly. Uh -huh. That's foolishness. Yeah. Remember what we said? The cross, the preaching of the cross is what? Foolishness to them that perish. Yeah. But to those that are saved is the power of God. Some of those might have thought, that's foolish. I'm not gonna look at that. Mm. I'll treat myself. Yeah. I'll get this poison out myself. Come on. They died. All right. They had to put their faith in what? In God's Word. In what God had told them to do. Why? There was no power in the pole itself. There was no power in the brazen serpent. Why? But there was power in what God had commanded them to do in obedience. Yeah. And when they looked to that serpent, when they looked to that pole, they lived. Come on. I'm telling you today that Jesus used that as an example of His cross. Why? When he would be lifted up and draw all men unto him. You've been bitten by a serpent today, but there is hope. Yeah. There is an antidote. If you will look to the cross, if you will look to the top of Mount Calvary, if you will look, if you will put your faith, if you will behold the finished work of Jesus, you can live like they lived in the wilderness that were bitten by the serpent. Amen. Without it, you cannot live. That's right. You might try to be good enough, uh -huh. but you won't live. Yeah. You might try to put your faith in the Ten Commandments, but you won't live. Come on. You might try to go back and do the old law, become a Jew, do all of the things, yeah. keep the Sabbaths, keep the feasts, uh -huh. but you won't live. Amen. You will die spiritually and physically. Yes, sir. There will be no eternal life for you. There will be eternal death. Amen. Instead of living forever, forever, you will die forever yes. in the torments of hell. Right. Because there's only one way to live today. Just as it was for the children of Israel in the wilderness when they had sinned, when they had been bitten by those serpents, yeah. the only way for them to live was to look to the top of the pole. Come on. The only way for you to live today is for you to look at Jesus and His finished Amen. work on the cross of Calvary. Really? Put your faith in Jesus. His finished work is the only hope for mankind. Mm. You cannot live it good enough to make it. You cannot be good enough to make it. Wow. Only through Amen. Jesus and His finished work on the cross can you make it today. All right. You say, Brother Billy, I know that. I've been in church all my life. Yeah, but there's many out there that don't know that. Right. There's many out there today that believe they have to be good enough. I can't tell you the times that I've heard people talk to me over the years and they would come to church, but they're just not good enough. They'll come to church when they get good enough. They'll come to God when they clean up some things, whenever they get their life straight. You ain't never going to be good enough. That's right. Why don't you come to the Lord and let Him clean you up? Amen. Put your faith in Him and His finished work. Let Him do the work. Amen. In your life because you can't. I can't. Nobody's good enough. Only Jesus and what He did at the cross. Someone else have something this morning.